Yeah, I remember seeing dicks like in in butts, <laughs> like in mouths, like in in everywhere, and just being like, "What is going on here?" Welcome back to Show Me Yours Podcast with Jackie and Johnny. I'm Jackie Agnew. I'm Johnny DeVito. And uh, welcome back, as I already said. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, Jackie, that's a fantastic <laughs> intro. We're not going to do anything about it. We're going to leave it right there. That's good radio. <laughs> the exciting thing about today's episode, Jackie, is that we've done so many goddamn guests. Mm -hmm. And I like having guests. Yeah. I'm a social butterfly, you know what yeah. I mean, right? Like, I'll always open the doors, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, to anybody, right? Nobody's ever brought a bottle of wine. You know what I mean? It's Nobody's true. ever brought a, you know, even even a snack. Yeah. You know what I mean? What the fuck is that? Cheese and crackers, nothing, right? So I'm not going to say that all the guests that we've had suck. Mm -hmm. But no one has brought us gifts yet. Just so. saying. Just saying. <laughs> um, but it's totally fine. The reason that we started this podcast was so we could, you know, we could talk our shit, right? We could yeah. show each other fucking tunes that we both like and stuff. Exactly. And then it's just been a whirlwind. Everybody's like, yo, I want to come and sit on the couch. I mean, it's hard being this uh, noteworthy, you know, new when, and when, noteworthy. When you're in demand like this, Jackie, like it's really hard to, uh, you know, to turn down the droves. Of yeah. people that have Sweets. actually oh my goodness right they yeah. keep coming they keep coming and uh and today we're finally in a position where we can say hey mm -hmm. this is our fucking show yeah yeah and we're gonna talk about <laughs> one of my favorite bands uh -huh. one of my favorite albums we might, <laughs> we, we might even get into it a little bit yeah. i don't know but the <laughs> just I, I i just can't say how excited i am mm -hmm. to be at the table yeah, not to using be back coasters. In Look at you. You're already spilling. I'm and so shit. sorry. I noticed that. No, it's too. fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm just going to do a quick adjustment here because I feel like you're getting all of this. Feel like I'm getting all the light? Okay. Yeah. We're yeah, adjusting on the fly? Like, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, like, I mean, the, more, the yeah. light loves me, Jackie. Right? <laughs> I've walked into the light several times and I've been sent back. But, uh, you know, that's that's just uh, that's just between me and Jesus. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done a done a cast in the in the studio here. Yeah. So we got to got to, you know, shake, shake the rust off. Of you gotta, it. Yeah, you yeah. got to jump, drive and then you will. And you got to, you know, shake and rattle and roll. Right. Yeah. I think that like, that goes without <laughs> saying it's impossible to um, understate the impact that uh, the last two years has had on everybody's life. You yes. know what I mean? And nothing more um has really been getting me mm -hmm. than like the absence of live music right right yeah. so there is been nothing but a great opportunity for a lot of bands to be putting music out and stuff like that yeah. but i think a lot of them are holding on to it because you can't tour it you can't share it with everybody right Right. yeah 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 which is um a little bit upsetting i think i can hear the crackle from the light in the corner i here. know it's that? really going if i it mean explodes it explodes uh, yeah time. this might be this podcast might be all over the place quite literally but um, I don't think the mics are going to pick it up. Nope. But yeah, it is a little concerning. It's crackling more than usual. Yeah, if you guys see, uh, you know, feel us getting a little bit weird here, it's that we're <laughs> literally a ticking time bomb, yeah. maybe five feet away from where we're sitting yeah. right now. But, you know, that's all good. <laughs> that's all gravy, baby. If anyone wants to donate, we can uh, yeah. upgrade yeah, our, our setup here. That'd yeah, be awesome. go fund us. Someone start a GoFundMe page. For show me yours podcast, should or maybe we, we should start it. Yeah, yeah that cut out the middleman there. I was going to say you start it, it and then send us the money you yeah. get. <laughs> I just like the idea of someone doing it for us. That'd be funny but if somebody started a GoFundMe podcast for our podcast and then kicked us like seventy thirty or something. Yeah, back, like just gave us thirty <laughs> yeah, percent. That'd yeah. be awesome. Uh, maybe we'll start one, and uh, kick them thirty. Yeah, yeah, thirty percent will go back to the viewers. Exactly, you <laughs> donate us. 30% more than what you want us to have and we will give you back that 30%. Do yourself a favor and put something <laughs> in your pocket. I yeah. mean, nobody <laughs> is really doing anything that's going to benefit your life, right? There's nobody else out there offering you this kind of once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's very true. Right? I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, you can just hang your hat on the fact that, you know, you did something positive. Yeah. Right? Like your kids are yeah. going to look at you one day and they're going to be like, Daddy, where were you when the shit went down? And mm -hmm. you'd be like, I was donating to Show Me Yours podcast. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, you mean the 
the show me you show me yours overlords that now run the all of um, the americas yeah basically the free world in general yeah right? and they'll be like yeah i helped and they're like oh thank god this is the kind of leadership that the world needed oh thousands of years we've been going without it yeah right? and uh soon we will uh you'll all be our uh um underlings jackie i need to make it very clear to you right now <laughs> that people aren't possessions okay? i didn't i did not say that okay. i said underlings underlings okay okay <laughs> i will rule over top of Albeit all of them, i lingered i yes. was searching for a word that would not get you were us really into stumbling trouble. around that okay all right all right <laughs> yeah i'm into it yeah. i'm into it okay all right <laughs> Back to the topic at hand, Jackie. <laughs> what we're dealing with right now is uh, just kind of, um, I'm, I'm not going to say like a lull, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe like a plateau of, mm -hmm. of goods. You know, people are, uh, there's been so little, I think, like great music mm -hmm. been kind of put out maybe in the past couple of years that people are losing their minds over Drake and Kanye. Sure. I feel like there's just been so little music in general put out. And um, regardless of what you may think uh, or what you regardless of if you like Drake or Kanye or not, they are still like the biggest like hype lords. And so for them to be putting albums out a few days within each other, either way, after a news. pandemic, regardless of whether you think it's good music or not. Personally, I, I, I'm only halfway through Drake's. I haven't listened to his in its entirety yet. Oh, did you yet. hear the first uh, 30, 53 seconds of Kanye's album? I heard, yeah, I listened to his whole album. Donda. It took me, yeah. Donda. Yeah. Donda. <laughs> it took me a while. They're both lengthy albums. They're both over an hour. Donda, I'm sorry, nothing resonated with me there. It was it was very bloated, very meandering. Uh, there were no there were no bangers, no bops. Nothing really slapped for me. Uh, Drake, I will say his album already, I like it a little bit better. Uh, but that being said, not his best work either. I only hear them peripherally from what my roommates play and it all <laughs> sounds like dog shit to me. And I'm a big fan <laughs> of the hip hop music, right? And I really want, you know, I, but, I, but I want some bangers. Maybe the stuff that I'm looking for isn't the kind of music that they're making. You know what I mean? Hard beats yeah. and hard rhymes, right? I want some bars. I would say I they're mean? both past their prime. Uh, I was big fans of both of them at different times in my life both of these albums i wasn't really expecting it to be their best work and i would say they met my expectations that being said i haven't listened to the second half of drake's album maybe it'll blow me away might revolutionize music yeah. in general probably not but, but we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna go with it but yeah yeah so i think you know regardless uh i forgot what my point was well, ba yeah. basically, Jackie, what I was trying to say was that the in the in the midst of all the fog, right? You have a great band, probably yeah, the yeah. best three piece for my money, <laughs> okay. in the Lawrence Arms. Right. Yes. Put out an album called Skeleton Coast in 2021, mm -hmm. and I would say it's probably my f favorite album of the I don't know since the since the real world went away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's uh, it grew on me a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know when it kind of came out. Um, uh, I'm always going to compare it to the, like its last work and and uh, well it's funny that you mentioned with uh, like you're saying that um, Kanye and Drake were both like past their prime mm -hmm. yeah um, this band uh, for me only continues to get better now mm -hmm. being a friend of mine I played a lot of Lawrence Arms songs for you yes and you've heard my love for an album called O Calcutta yes which basically revolutionized fucking a, a new <laughs> breed of punk rock I mean we could talk about it we could get into it but maybe mm -hmm. we'll save that for the O Calcutta record because mm -hmm. we're gonna do it right but basically, this band, um, especially in the last three albums, from O Calcutta to Metropole to Skeleton, Skeleton Coast, mm -hmm. this one that we're talking about today, um, they almost get better. It's right. almost like they kind of find their groove and and uh, and mm -hmm. have really kind of gotten into it. I think on the earlier albums, they were singing like the wrong harmonies. There's a great podcast with um, the singer. Well, we'll break down the band here very quickly. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Arms is Neil Hennessy on drums, Chris McCoggan on guitar, and Brendan Kelly on bass. Mm -hmm. um, Chris and Brendan kind of taking um, uh, equal duty or whatever with vocals and stuff like that, kind of writing um, their own songs separately and bringing the whole album together. Right. Which really gives each of their records a really... Um, like a cool mix of like peaks and valleys mm -hmm. right because you have one that's um like chris mccoggan go and listen to sundowner as well as his other project and stuff but you're gonna get the kind of um like the lighter side 
and then Brendan comes in and just kind of kick punches you in the gut a little bit with like the heavier voice and the, and mm-hmm. the screams and stuff like that faster pace so goddamn fucking good and also check out um brendan kelly and the wandering birds for more lighter kind of stuff and um uh brendan kelly and uh, drummer neil hennessy also in the falcon if mm-hmm. you want to fucking ooh, go to unicornography <laughs> we'll talk about it it's one of the fucking greatest records of all time mm-hmm. in my opinion it's just you know what i mean from the start it just it kicks you in the dick and and it puts you where you want to be and this particular record it's almost like they've started to do like um like almost concept records. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess they all have been. Yeah, shit. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of context here that you might not have or whatever, okay. but they've been kind of doing this for uh, for a period of time, and I think they've now like hit the fucking nail on the head, mm-hmm. and I yeah, I, c- I can't wait for them to right to keep going at this trajectory. Yeah. Before we d- we dive deep into this album, did you want to talk about the the other the other story? Sure, that, we dipped yeah. our toes into yeah. it a little bit. Like you know, motherfuckers, like we're gonna you might get a little bit of music out of this one. <laughs> I'm really excited <laughs> yeah, about it. But yeah, Jackie, yeah. you're right. You're right. <laughs> I got a little. I got I got a little no, excited. No, 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 no. That's okay. It's a little uh, a little amu- uh, amuse bouche. Oh yeah, we're talking about <laughs> this one. Um, but there is something that uh, that that's been on our minds now. Yes. That we do have to talk about. Yeah. So a little precursor. Mm-hmm. A few years ago, Jackie, there was a story on the news mm-hmm. where a young man had moved back into his parents' house briefly. Yeah. And was moving away. Mm-hmm. And in that move, the parents had thrown away a vintage pornography collection. Right. And he was threatening to sue. Now, I remember this story okay. from before thinking, that's hilarious. Right. Could you imagine putting a fucking dividing line in between you and your parents. I mean, that's pretty, yeah, to take And having it to that court. dividing line being like non, st- just like a pile of vintage gangbang pornography. I'm not sure which brand he was into specifically, yeah. but I hope the grosser the better. Because yeah. you can't, like, you can't replace some of these things. I mean, this is vintage stuff. VHS, DVD, hard copy magazines, Jackie. Like, this yeah, is, this right. is, this yeah, is good yeah. stuff. Right, yeah, yeah, it's collector's items, which I, I understand. I mean, like, I, uh, I'm, as uh as as you know i have a, I, I get attached to things i have a lot of things you've you've yeah, helped me pornography move before. subscriptions <laughs> things like that, right? yeah Jackie. but but anything uh i understand the attachment to things you know and so i understand okay. getting really upset yeah when because that's happened to me before uh nothing is as valuable as this but um in the the years uh, since I've moved away, um, whether that be the years when I was living in Montreal or since moving to Vancouver, there have been some some possessions tossed out uh, from my room that I was not uh, happy about. Sure. They were dubbed useless, mm. and I said, "In what world is a snuggy useless? It's a blanket with arms." And um, it just doesn't, uh, I, I don't understand, you know, throwing out someone else's possessions. It's weird because, like, the guy probably had a similar item, but uh, <laughs> they sell an X-rated version with a dick hole in it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, a Snuggie is basically just, because, like, you get hot when you're masturbating under a blanket. You know what I mean? Right. Maybe you might not, but I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just nice if you can have, like, a little breathability, <laughs> right? And it was a chubby. Yeah, or if they were a chubby. <laughs> it could have been, you know what I mean, yeah, right? But that's yeah. that's an, like an as seen on TV product that mm-hmm. was like only on the Playboy channel, right? Only sold on like a specific infomercial two times at two in the right. fucking morning. You had to be there, right? You know what I mean? Um, he's purchasing this stuff like analog style. He's probably writing checks for yeah, some of this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is old school collection. This goes back to like this is a level of depravity that dates back. Right. You know what I mean? 15, 20 years or whatever. And none of those. Pa- imagine if he was like, Your Honor, none of those pages stick together. Right. Like, <laughs> I cared about this shit. I'm yeah. over here busting nuts willy nilly in every hustler that I had. Right. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. Right? These would might be considered like vintage to or sorry, like a mint condition to a collector. Yeah. You know what I mean? Looking for resale. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. What I'm mm. s- I'm saying, uh, giving the this uh, background info is that I understand where he's coming from. Sure. Because I, too, have been upset about uh, items of mine being thrown away now i would love to know what um the relationship is like between him and his parents for him to to go the legal route um there must be some sort of why did he move out like there must be some sort of i would hope if they had a perfect relationship and then all of a sudden it's turned 
into a court battle. I don't know if you've ever been uh, sued before. My family has over our, our dog multiple times by our neighbor. Doesn't end well. Not a lot of neighborly love. No, no, yeah, <laughs> the, the relationship is damaged. It's spoiled, so, Jackie. But when yeah. you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars, yeah. But what I, I, it had I been just the last hope, draw. yeah, it had to I, have been the last draw situation. I, I hope that they already had a bad relationship rather than this being what ruined them. But anyways, with that lead up, the story does have a happy ending now. From what depends whose side you're on. Yeah, the dad had a jerk off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, the son has won his lawsuit against his parents after they destroyed his porn collection. Finally, justice prevails. Yeah, <laughs> he can. So I haven't even read the article. So ba- it's worth the the uh, uh, his porn collection was estimated to be worth twenty nine thousand dollars. Uh, and so I guess that that's what they have to pay him now. Money, 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 yeah. money. Money. There's no way that that guy is going to turn around and not invest all of that $30,000 back into um, physical pornography, right? You would have to, yeah. Because at something. that point, like, you, I, I mean, I, I like records. Mm-hmm. I collect stuff, you know what I mean? There's something warm about it, right? Exactly, like, maybe yeah. he feels the same way about, like, a VHS. Maybe there's something about, like, the crackle of yeah. the VHS or something that kind of puts you where you need to be to enjoy that a little bit better, right? Like, with the vinyl, mm-hmm. people say there's a tone or something like that, right? I like the art. I like to read the lyrics and shit like that, right? There's something, uh, there's, like, a personal connection right. that I think you don't get with digital music. Or digital pornography, for that matter. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I had to go out of the out of my way to buy the thing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And to take it home, and it, and it does like it adds like um, you know, a, a little bit of uh, of of intimacy between like the collector and the thing that you're collecting. Yeah, right? like to have the the physical object, and it is like an apt comparison. If a your parents were to throw out like your record collection. No one would be questioning that that is you know you need to reimburse. One hundred percent. but just 100%. because it's porn. And just because, like, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's up to somebody's um, discretion to say what I think is right, you know, to be collected, right? Like you could yeah. have like um, uh, like vintage uh, fake dog poo collection, right? Mm. Like all the different piles of poop that they've made to look like dog shit over the years. Yeah. You could have a collection of 40 of those things just because I think, well, I think that's pretty awesome, actually. Total mm-hmm. disclaimer, right? Because I can cool, see yeah. that somebody, you know, might look at that like that's not a collection. This is just literally a box of fake dog shit. Yeah. Try to find that again. Try to track that down and try to replace what a lifetime of hunting out those items is worth to somebody that gives a shit about them. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what you're collecting. It does matter um, that somebody is an asshole for just assuming that it's worthless. Or 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 taking even a higher road about it. Even taking judgmental. Exactly. Taking that road about it. Saying like you need to find the Lord. So like here I'll send you a Bible instead of your twenty thousand dollar porn collection. Yeah. It's crazy to me. Yeah, and whether you're someone's parents or not, it's not up to you what someone decides to Oh my god, Jackie, <laughs> break through in the case. <laughs> break through in the case. Imagine this. Yeah, yeah. Right? Imagine the dad is going through and he was like, Holy shit, like this is taking me back to my days. I remember all these issues. Mm-hmm. I remember all these videos, right? But I got the right. old lady at the house. She's a fucking total freak, right? Right. Not a freak in the good way. A total lunatic that won't let me possess the things that I want, yeah. much like vintage pornography. Right. So then he kind of maybe became attached to his son's collection, mm-hmm. kept it maybe in like a U Haul facility, maybe like a U storage kind yeah, of situation yeah, or yeah. something, right? Under but you know, behind the orange pull up door yeah. is now like a lazy boy mm-hmm. and like a big screen. And now the dad has like, you know what I mean? He like a wank to cave off in a, in a storage yeah, facility. He's, he, there's no, sur- there's no search history that you have to fucking deal with here or whatever. Yeah, he pays yeah, cash, yeah. you know what I mean? Monthly, right? It's not a big deal, mm-hmm. but now he figures like, okay, I've set up like my man cave. This is going to be awesome. I'm going to be chucking loads in here for like, and probably until I die. Mm-hmm. Got to tell the son I threw everything out. Right, yeah. because that's not something that the son would ever share with the dad. That's not something that the dad would share with the son. But now that there's legal ramifications, pops has to sit there and he has to look at this U-Haul facility mm-hmm. filled with all this vintage porno and like this great, you know, um, life that he's created for himself that right. he stole. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's not yeah, his. Yeah. He doesn't have any right to all this stuff, right? Right. Yeah. Do you pay your son thirty thousand dollars, or do you come clean and say, "Hey, 
it's all over here. Depends on the dynamic of the marriage. I mean, if he wants to, if he's going to that length to, to hide that part of his life from his wife, then it leads me to believe that there's... Oh, dads are hiding way <laughs> more heinous shit than a little bit of porn from their wives. You yeah, know I mean? but if you have a whole... Uh, like, if you're going to those lengths, is what I mean. Like, he needs it to be that separate and secret, then then it seems to me that they're on two completely different pages. The you know husband I mean? and the wife? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if, she, if it was that extreme that he needs to rent out a storage facility... To steal his son's $30,000 30, $30, porn of porn collection. And jerk off in this, this storage facility just so there's no chance of his wife being in the same vicinity as him, I think that that's, um, I mean, I, I pray for the for the family. For Do you <laughs> think that's a reach? I was reaching a little bit there. You no, think no, it's just no, not no, like no. a likely possibility? I think it's entirely possible. The, the thing that gets me is the language used in the court case was that they destroyed the porn. So that leads me to believe that there was some sort of evidence of it being destroyed beyond repair. Maybe they burned it. You having like you having like a like a just a, like a pussy bonfire in the backyard of just like <laughs> all this like that is really weird because yeah. like that's like magazines and shit like it doesn't go up like newspaper you know what I no, mean? No, it like, doesn't. I'd imagine it's that'd like a, be toxic. It's black, yeah, yeah it's a black, right. Uh, flame there, yeah. And I mean like you know I'm sure as well they as maybe I do mixed too. Mixed it right? in with some other flammable. Well, yeah, but like I mean, but but even like a like like like. In a thirty thousand dollar porn collection, I'm assuming mm -hmm. there's toys in there too, right? So say like fourteen, fifteen oh, dildos are. Did it, uh, there'd probably be specify like what the nature. Of I it? would be blown away if a man had amassed a thirty thousand dollar porn collection and it was just pornography. Right. Like I think it would be like you know I mean there would have to be some toys and apparatuses and stuff in there because if you're gonna spend all that money on jerking off you're all probably gonna have a couple things to jerk off with maybe a couple pocket right. pussies or something like that yeah you know yeah, what I mean? yeah maybe into a little fair, bit of butt yeah. stuff maybe you're involved in a community that is also into this thing and you basically mm -hmm. just house the library oh you know what i mean mm. right like there could be and then he had no choice but to seek uh to go to um through a legal process to get his money uh back because it was under it was his responsibility now to replace all these items for his fellow uh well he's a good he's got a yeah. good heart he's a man of the community yeah yeah i mean clearly after yeah. all this like we've just made all this up but like i mm -hmm. mean in our in our heart of hearts is what we want to believe right? right obviously he was dealing with a tyrannical um mother and father mm -hmm. that um through whatever you know what what whatever ideas that their parents possess I think is completely out of the fact here. Like mm -hmm. you have to, um, you have to find out what's going on between the father and the son. I think because the father is right. one who allegedly had destroyed everything, right? So if the father is like I that, I think it was it was both, was it not? The father was the one that made the contact. Okay. Sorry, in the article, the father's one that okay. made the contact right. and had and and delivered the news mm. that all this stuff had been destroyed. Gotcha, gotcha. Right? So he clearly had some guilt there. You would think so, right? Yeah. Because I don't care who you are. If it's fucking uh, your son's thirty thousand dollar collection of anything, at one point you got to be mm -hmm. like, "There's a lot of shit here." I mean, some of it might have seminal or sen sentimental value, mm -hmm. right? Well, it says so. I'm just skimming this to try and see if there's more information. It said that he moved into his parents' house after a divorce, and so perhaps this was like items belonging to both him and his his ex-wife like there could have been an incredible amount of sentimental value what a relationship items, right yeah what a relationship yeah. to have like we've never amassed any mm. pornography you yeah. know what i mean right together yeah right there's yeah. no i don't have one relationship that's not true that's not true i've amassed <laughs> i've been in some relationships where i've amassed some things but never yeah. like physical pornography to yeah. watch right yeah. always just kind of yeah. like physical things to put inside myself yeah and somebody else yeah maybe some light belt restraints some things like that or whatever but mm -hmm. it's usually um like uh you know like 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 products and toys and things like that right to aid yeah. in the um in the act rather than just watching other people yeah not like going out and shopping for 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 magazines just and fuck flicks and and, and, and magazines that's yeah that sounds that sounds lovely there is, um, you know what I mean, your version of entertainment might be different than mine. 
that's true. Yeah, you have to reach a, a common. Uh, some people watch Space Jam too, right? For yeah. some people, Algae Rhythm is the man, mm-hmm. and they're trying to front like they don't remember. You know what I mean? That Bill fucking Murray already rocked that motherfucker. Yeah, if you're if you're watching, sp- I mean, you sure watch watch it once. But watch uh, it once so that you could understand that you know what I mean. Don Cheadle is probably one of the greatest actors of, our t- of all time. But yeah. as far as like a supporting role in a Space Jam movie goes, Don Cheadle yeah. doesn't even come close to Bill Murray. And why would you? Why? Why the need for the sequels? It's it. Honestly, Jackie, if you have amassed enough like original content, mm-hmm. and now your um your viewership is at a an age where you can capitalize on their nostalgia. Yeah. Then you just repackage it and sell it back to them. They had like the fucking clown from it in the fucking um uh like in the audience. There's like oh, Batman yeah. on the side of the court, like cheering on LeBron James and oh, really? shit. Did you watch it? Yeah. I haven't seen it. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking bad. <laughs> that it was like infuriating. Right. You know right. what I mean? To the point, except for Don Cheadle's algae rhythm, because right. That's hilarious to me. So at some <laughs> point, like the movie is so bad that it be like it, it gains its own charm. Yeah, a yeah. little bit, but um, but nothing compared to the. No, no, no. It's yeah. it's because it, Warner Brothers is like the only thing that they have that to stand on is all the stuff that they've done. Right. Right. Like yeah. I think that um, nothing new is coming down the pipe for them, which is a goddamn travesty. Because in my opinion, the Warner Brothers cartoons, the Looney Tunes, are my favorite. Were my favorite as a kid. Yeah. And Daffy yeah. Duck is still like my favorite cartoon character, arguably or whatever, to this day. If unless we're talking about like Randy Marsh, you know what I mean? Right. I would say for like yeah. children's cartoon character, nobody yeah. makes me laugh harder than Daffy Duck. Got to give it up to Warner Brothers Pictures for that. But mm-hmm. if Warner Brothers doesn't have anything fucking new in the next in the last like fucking twenty years or whatever, let's say well you, you know damn near twenty five years or whatever since Space Jam came mm-hmm. out, and all you've done is just um, basically make the story shittier. Make LeBron kind of suck as a father <laughs> 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 to his kid. His son basically is like uh, LeBron wants his kid to play basketball and right. be like the greatest basketball player in the world. And his right. kid is just like a fucking computer genius who like, <laughs> ma- which is like a uh, skill in its own thing that yeah. a parent could be supportive, supportive about. about that, <laughs> not, <yeah>. not LeBron. <laughs> Not LeBron. <laughs> you know, so then they get, uh, yeah, they get sucked in. And, and it's just fucking stupid, right? So the idea that algae rhythm, like, exists anywhere that, like, Warner Brothers property exists, mm-hmm. it's a fucking thin premise at best. Okay. And it's not for the kids. Space Jam, Jackie, I was five years old. I, yeah, no. I was, right? That yeah, shit was yeah. made for me. Yeah. I remember we fucking watched the shit out of that uh VHS that we we watched that all the fucking yeah. time on repeat. Like yeah, you, yeah. you had a lot of like the Disney like the the um, like Disney movies, I'm assuming. Yeah. Right. So like the yeah. VHS, you know they're like bigger plastic ones. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. And the only yeah. big plastic one that I had was yeah. fucking Space Jam. Yeah. Because I'm not yeah, yeah. a girl, even though like I mean I dressed up <laughs> like one from time to time. But regardless of the fact my mom just wasn't buying me that shit or whatever, right? She was trying to right. suppress my homosexuality. Right down. You stuff that down. <laughs> you stuff that down. You watch Looney Tunes. Yeah. You know what I was this is such a tangent. But you know what I was thinking about? Oh, like, this whole episode is gonna morning. be a tangent. We might get to the Lawrence <laughs> yeah. Arms. It's the uh, best. Yeah. It's really fucking good. They're my favorite band. Check them out. <laughs> yeah. But if we in case we don't get to it. I was thinking about uh this morning though, like when I was a kid, uh and like growing up with two brothers, it's like we would like wear each other's clothing all the like i feel like that's a natural phase for a kid to go through but now i feel like parents are so like hyper aware about it well, if, like, like now kid, if kelly like, was wearing your clothes i think one way is like well, it's, no, it's okay I mean, for like, one way to go like but i know. mean like as as ch- as young children like sure. i'm talking like like three four years well, old. i only had an older brother right so like i would right, i would yeah, like yeah, i mean half sense, mo- yeah. most of my clothes were his old clothes or right whatever, with, like, yeah, the yeah. Shit. but it was like i don't know i mean maybe anyone who's watching who had a brother sister relationship maybe they can speak to this as well but like i remember when we were super young like we it's like a natural like exploration thing as a child just being like oh like why like i can wear like guys clothes like i'll wear my brother's clothes and they're like yeah like i'll wear yours like just walking around the house being silly oh yeah you don't put sex on it when you're a fucking child exactly but now i feel like if kids do that yeah if parents have children they're like three years old wanting to put on his sister's you know yeah. shirt or whatever they're like oh, oh God. okay okay oh God. but oh God. then like yeah. you push and that whole thing they're either forward. gonna yeah. go they're either gonna be really scared and shut it down or they're gonna be like oh i think, I think that like my three-year-old might be trans transgender sure when it's just 
like kind of I think like a natural phase that every kid goes through when you're just finding out what yeah gender if you're even a kid is. and there's yeah. like a fucking trunk full of of, of like yeah. of, of stage costume and shit you put it all on yeah like Joey yeah. fucking pissing off Chandler or whatever you come back exactly. wearing everything <laughs> yeah, in the and fucking trunk yeah. and like you don't <laughs> attach like like sex or anything to it right and if it you know if that comes later where you're like oh no wait a minute I'm wearing this fucking dress every day then cool shout out to that kid or whatever yeah exactly <sighs> if that if that turns out uh not turns out if you grow you know you grow up and that remains a, yeah. a big part of your personality then obviously that is totally valid but i also think that that's just a natural phase yeah parents for need to young chill. children to go through and i fear that like now parents who are like maybe over um overly sensitive to it would be too quick to be like oh my child is is non-binary or my child is transgender because that's a weird thing to say for about a fucking five-year-old kid or whatever right like i don't uh yeah i think that well like the thing for me is that like i like have changed my mind I'm, i'm fucking shit i do like still to this day or whatever like and i really glad that no decision that i ever made me, uh, as a yeah. child is <laughs> yeah. still affecting me to this day <laughs> you yeah, know what i mean like yeah. permanently or whatever right but at the same time too i mean uh you know i'm sure like i'd like to be a lady probably like only two three times a week <laughs> right? so maybe that puts me under you know that spectrum or whatever right yeah and like also just because i know i'd be smoking fucking hot like <laughs> yeah. look at me listen yeah, to my voice yeah, of course right <laughs> change from yeah. like johnny to jenny well, that's my sister's name i'd have to get a different name <laughs> i'm jenny <laughs> yeah. that's hot but uh but but um yeah, yeah. I forget where where that where that thought kind of. Jackie, this has been from, an entire uh, tangent that basically that started off with, 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 with the, yeah, morning, with yeah. Well, no, I think that, well, it's, yeah. it's interesting. It's interesting to bring up. It's definitely yeah. you know nothing that like I have any really like to stand on or whatever. But I do think it's kind of weird. I, I mean, do think it's yeah. weird that anything um, like remotely sexualized is even being discussed in front of children. Like what I the agree. fuck are There's we like doing, a certain man? It's like you need to allow like them to have their time to explore. And like mm-hmm. I feel like that would be the weirdest part about having like young children is kind of just having to witness them like exploring things and like not knowing uh, what it means like as an adult. Because yeah. there's no, you know, when you're an adult and you kind of like sexualize everything. Not that you're sexualizing a child, but you I know do. Like I'm what playing with, t- a, with a stress <laughs> ball right yeah. now that's in the shape of a boot. <laughs> So, like, it happens. But I, I mean, they're know, yucky, like, in real life, but, yeah, like, this one's yeah. pretty cool. But just, like, <laughs> witnessing, like, kids, like, do things, like, you know, discover things. And they have their, everything is completely innocent for, for a child. But just seeing yeah. it as an adult and being, like, don't know well, taking the well, well, that's the one. thing, is, right? Yeah, if you're hyper yeah. aware, then you take the childhood innocence away from play, right? Like, exactly, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, like yeah. when kids are playing or whatever, there's, like, a childhood innocence that's there. Yeah, so, like, if you're yeah. being hyper aware and, like, putting anything else onto it, that's probably not what's going through the kid's head yeah exactly you know what i mean it's probably like oh these shoes are like high off the ground that's weird it'd be cool to fucking to try to walk around in those and you're like you're that's a three-year-old boy five-year-old boy let him do whatever the fuck he wants and leave him the fuck alone (laughs) yeah and that was like me and my yeah me and my brothers would always like play around and dress up and shit and my parents never like made us feel shame about it and like obviously like i'm like privileged saying this i'm very fortunate that i've never like second guessed my my gen i've never felt like i wanted yeah. to be a guy and that's like a very like privileged position totally. i feel lucky totally but um but yeah if you're like a parent and then you're all of a sudden shaming like a you know four-year-old a four-year-old your four-year-old son for trying on mom's high heels and they have no idea they don't have to know that that's that's not wrong. Jackie, like, that's I would a wear kid. like a flower, yeah. like a like a Hawaiian T-shirt and get called a fag. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that was the, it was just like a lot like harsher and stuff. So like yeah. I mean definitely, um, I don't want anybody to go through like you know like growing up like that. But at the same time, there needs to be like a you know what you I mean. You also don't have to put labels to it. Exactly. You'd be like oh like my my son tried on my my wife's high heels. I think he might be transgender i think he might be non-binary it's like no he's a fucking four-year-old <laughs> I was gonna you're discovering the world <laughs> you know he's a fucking <laughs> that's where my family would have went with it right like the thing was like i used to play with uh, like wrestling action figures yeah, like i was yeah. obsessed with wrestling when i was a kid right so like i would collect all these things another fucking on topic of these collections mm-hmm. right like 
And I'm pissed off that my mom threw away all these fucking collect because, like, I mean, there'd be some dope ones. The only mm-hmm. one that I have is Stone Cold Steve Austin still, but I had to buy that from a grown man mm-hmm. when I was a grown man after the fact, right? Right, yeah, yeah. So I would have, like, The <laughs> Rock and Stone Cold. I had Mankind, Cactus Jack, and Dude Love. Yeah. Jackie, mm-hmm. do you have any idea what that means? No. That means that Mick Foley got paid three times because mm-hmm. that's all three characters that he's wrestled as is him. So it's really yeah. just Mick Foley three times, but it's Mankind, <laughs> Cactus Jack, and Dude Love. And then, like, I'd have them be, like, a triple threat team up against, like, say, like, Kane and Undertaker and Stone Cold or something. That's the coolest fucking match ever. I'm, like, 10 years old. I'm having a great time. But my uncles, my older brother and everything, they'd just be snickering, like, oh, Johnny's playing with his men. <laughs> right. Because I'm just, like, yeah, you know, playing yeah. with, like, jacked up dudes in their underwear and stuff like mm-hmm. that, right? Fast forward a few years later, not much has changed. <laughs> but, <I'm> just <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? The, um, yeah. uh, like, there was always, like, some kind of, like, a... Uh, like weird connotation with like you have to do it this way and yeah. you can't play with those things or whatever. Like yeah. Mighty Max was like a thing that was exactly Polly Pocket, but for guys or whatever, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So like if you're like a five-year-old kid and you find a Polly Pocket and you're playing or whatever, the girl's just like going around like a mall rather than like a fucking haunted castle. Mm-hmm. Essentially the same fucking game. Yeah. Right? But, you know. Yeah. There's something weird to it, but nobody ever told me that like, oh, maybe you'd be more comfortable in a dress. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I was already too I tall. Think, I was already uh, too loud and stuff like that. They were like, "No, just, just do your favor, man. You'd be, yeah. you'd be a real." Uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if like parents like then. I just feel like if you're a six foot Joan Rivers, if I was just transitioned when yeah. I was really young, that'd be funny. <laughs> well, I was even thinking, like when I was thinking about this this morning, like that thought would never have even gone through like my parents' minds because no one. It was so, n- not that it wasn't a thing, obviously it's always been a thing, sure. but it wasn't something that a lot of people knew about or talked about, just like the existence of transgendered people, which is terrible that it's taken this long. But back when I was a kid, they, my parents wouldn't have even had that thought. Maybe they would, <laughs> like, they wouldn't have been like, if it was, then the thought would have been like, oh, maybe maybe my kid's a tranny or something like that. Yeah, but not totally. Even yeah. Not even really like it being like a joke. I think it'd be played thing. off as a joke rather yeah, than anything specific. Exactly. Yeah, rather sure. than like actually sure. understanding, you know, it would never have even crossed anyone's mind. Yeah, totally. Well, yeah. until like uh, maybe fucking seeing like the crying game or something like that or whatever, because it was mm-hmm. always just yeah. like uh, like Rocky Horror Picture Show that probably too mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, but that's where it was like in pop culture. Yeah. Um, but also like the first time that, uh, oh, this fucking, this whole episode is coming full circle, Jackie. Yeah. Because, um, uh, when I was a kid, it's like a rite of passage for boys to find like porno in the, in the woods. Right. So we found like somebody's $30,000 porno collection. Maybe you've uh, never heard this. It's a rite of passage to find. It's porn a rite of passage. In the woods? Listeners fucking write in your finding porn in the woods story. Little boys find porn in weird places. Maybe not in the woods, Isn't but I found mine porn in, the wo- in the woods. Jackie, there, there must have been in the 90s, Jackie, there was porn <laughs> in the woods everywhere. <laughs> as far as the eye could see, every kid has a story of like in the garage, in the back or whatever, wherever they found it. Okay, but okay. in trail, there was this uh, there was like the dump and it was basically like over the hill from the high school that I went to or whatever. Right. So. Mm-hmm. If you climb up that fucking little mountain or whatever, it is a pretty big fucking hill. We're from mm-hmm. the Kootenays or whatever, you know. So, it's yeah, yeah. so you climb up that fucking hill, and at the top of it, under a tree, there was like three milk crates mm-hmm. filled with porn magazines. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. high five moment. This is amazing. I can't remember who initially found it. It wasn't me that initially found it. I was brought there by a friend. Right. So when we they just they had found it and left it there. Yeah. Well, everybody takes a little piece. You take. Well, yeah, but we're your kids, Jackie. So you can't take home a milk crate full of porn. I guess that's true. Right. You (laughs) take the one that you need because you've never even seen a teddy before. Right. So you're like, okay, I'm probably only going to need this one. You know, maybe like, you know, swap it out every week or whatever. Right. But it wasn't there for long. (laughs) That's that's the important part of this Mm -hmm. thing. Right. Because I think everybody ransacked and raided it or whatever. But um, I remember I taking one and just looking through it and barely like never seeing like sex or anything like that you know what i mean like i was way too young to be seeing that Mm -hmm. and i opened one page and it was like one of like the first things that like i remember or whatever but it was uh it was uh it was a tall woman 
um, you know, fishnets, high heels, kind of lingerie or whatever. Still super big fan of that. Dark mm-hmm. hair, st- still super big fan of that. Mm-hmm. Huge cock, still super big fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> you're like 12 years old. You're like, what the fuck is that? Like, holy shit. Maybe even younger than 12, actually, much younger than 12. But this, uh, yeah, like that, um, like that whole thing was uh, like it was peripheral but not right. in the you know what i mean out in the open or whatever right, right. and uh yeah it was kind of funny too because like all these like weird things or whatever were like taboo and shit like that and like you find like people are like making fun of them and shit and i'm like oh i'm into that so like almost like a yeah. it was almost like punk rock in a sense or whatever there's like an underground thing or whatever i'm like ah fuck you guys yeah you know or whatever right which yeah. is just crazy but now <laughs> i don't know now it's just everywhere and shit if you want to meet a lovely lady go to a makeup department at, uh, at, at your local Mac. <laughs> yeah. I think my first exposure to porn was um, I was in. <laughs> it was completely accidental. I was in uh, grade, probably grade two, and um, me and my uh, my friend Carlin. I'll say her name because we tell the story all the time. Um, so you, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, Carlin. Lovely. Yeah, 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 yeah we had yeah. it. was fantastic. Was, what's your boyfriend's <laughs> name again? Uh, Jeff. Good shit. Love yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to you guys. Yeah, it's funny. After this summer, I feel like everyone I tell stories about now that you, you've met, most of them. Um, but anyway, so Carla and I, I think we were grade two, and we were doing a school project on beavers. And <laughs> so this would have been 2001, 2002. So this is like right when the internet was kind of like starting. Yes, And yes, we didn't yes. know, like Google wasn't really a thing. Like we didn't know how to use I feel like internet. I've already like, uh, you know when you're at a test and like I've, yeah. I've already, like I've, I've finished the test before you told yeah, the story. Yeah. This is awesome. Sorry, continue. But we, so we didn't know how to use the internet. It just like was, it, it was just starting. The internet yeah. was just getting started. Um, I don't think Google was a thing yet. Or if it was, we didn't know how to use it or, or what what it was totally totally and so we were doing a, a school project on beavers so we just go to my like computer at home and just type in www.beavers.com shocked and horrified and confused <laughs> we were like this is not gonna help with the school project <laughs> was it hardcore was it like dick going in was there like I, do you remember specifically honestly, what, what I don't it was remember specifics because i remember i remember the first the few uh, first images that yeah, i saw the like, first so lesbian like picture that i saw i was like what well i remember so it must have been around the same time again not knowing how the internet worked how we like had fun on the internet was just going www.whatever.com. You know? Sure, yeah, of course. Yeah. And, um, Before Google, and, baby. Yeah, and so then another incident, and I'm pretty sure this was with Carlin as well. We just were, you know, playing around and went www.girls.com. And that was some, like, hardcore shit. I remember seeing, yeah, I remember seeing dicks like in in butts (laughs) like in mouths like in in everywhere and just being like what is going on here (laughs) i remember i remember seeing like an image of a woman giving a blowjob and me being like what like that's a thing why like, is being that like Jewish? seven years old and being like what the f- that is not where that that's what you pee out of huh? why are you oh uh? like, <laughs> <laughs> i remember the first blowjob that i ever saw like the first like video of it or whatever i came home and my brother is there with his friend joel joel dasty shout out to the man legendary cock on this guy anyway uh <laughs> it was like something of legend people yeah. would hear about oh yeah then you'd like start dating oh, a girl and you'd be like oh that poor that poor girl <laughs> well it's anyway. funny i remember or i guess lucky or, i don't know yeah growing up you somehow like in high school and shit you always knew the guys that had big big dicks oh like, it was yeah always talked yeah about oh it. yeah you know you know yeah. right you know the kids that keep their uh you know they, yeah. they keep the towel on when they're changing in the bathroom and shit yeah, right you know what yeah. i mean I re- hey yo <laughs> this no. fucking one guy I'll leave out all the details, but this one guy that a friend of mine was seeing after high school, but we all knew that he had a that he had like a massive schlong. Oh yeah, him. he's packing peace. Like, and what are we talking? Six like soft hang, uh, like a six I inch soft hang. That's fucking know, aggressive. Yeah, so you see that? You're that like, everyone. especially when you're a kid and you see like a kid with like a huge dick. You're like, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but I just remember me and my other friend, uh, not the one who was hooking up with him. 
but after our friend started kind of having a thing <laughs> with him just like yelling at him we'd be drinking and like yelling at him in the living room like what up horse dick like nice. we were just like calling him horse dick the whole the whole fucking evening like, <laughs> 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 i mean not the worst thing to be called i mean i'd rather be called horse dick than baby dick right so yeah. i mean there's nothing wrong with that yeah um well so yeah the first blowjob uh, you go back my brother's on like a LimeWire or Napster kind of um, mm-hmm. uh, downloading kind of situation. And you could download songs all day, but if, like the smallest video clip would take days, right? right? Like it would take so goddamn long. The file yeah. size was so big. And these guys were downloading this by the time I got home for like hours, mm-hmm. right? So the thing finally gets to like 100. Yeah. And they're like, we got porn. <laughs> we got porn. They were so happy. So I'm like, I'm coming out to be like, I want to see the porn, right? Because yeah. I might have only seen like the... The images at that time, never seen it in action, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, they click on the video, and it's like five seconds of a blowjob. I'm oh just god. like... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and they've been waiting <laughs> hours for like three pumps on a cock. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, like that, that was porn, crazy. And they were like, oh, what the fuck? Right? Like I, I had no idea that like that they'd been burned or you know right. or whatever yeah, right i yeah, didn't yeah. know what the fuck was going on but I'll, I'll always remember in my parents li- or my mom's <laughs> living room when like the family computer was a desktop like in the corner of the living room my, my brother had to like pull this off while she was at work and shit yeah classic <laughs> classic oh, you know God. but yeah like that uh you know i mean the, the the first porn regardless it's still it's still a collection you know what I mean? And it's right. important. And, uh, yeah, and then, don't and then throw you build out your, c- your child. Don't throw out anybody's collection, collection of anything. Yeah, yeah. Because you have no idea what that fucking psychopath, like what that means to that person. Yeah. Right? And you could be liable for damages. Up to and including $30,000. Yeah. So let's let's call that a win. Exactly. Yeah. Justice was served. Absolutely. And hopefully he can buy some of his uh, collectible items back. I mean, I, I really hope so. Or I really start hope- a new collection. Yeah, maybe maybe you can get yeah. on some eBay and get some of the the, the hot ticket items like your yeah. Debbie Does Dallas, your classics. You know what I mean? We'll come back, right? But well, I was just talking about Debbie Does Dallas the other day. Fuck, we were trying to remember. It wasn't Debbie Does Dallas. There was like that, and there was another. Um, there was another like big porn that like everyone in our fucking middle school watched, and all the guys had it on their iPods and shit. Was it pirates? We were trying. No, we were trying to remember. Me and my. Uh, my friend Shelby, sorry. friend <laughs> of the not, show, but she, um, we were trying to remember. There was this one woman that was in a bunch of different different porns that like all of our guy friends in middle school had on their their iPods, and it wasn't. So are we going to talk Dallas. about a famous porn star from the mid two thousands? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say blonde hair, big tits. I think I Jenna mean probably. Jameson? Uh, no, I wasn't like a big, it wasn't cause I, it wasn't like a big name like that. I don't know. It was oh, just okay. like some, I'm going to have to circle back to, to Shelby for the details of what, but I remember us like sitting in, uh, this was before we like went out, uh, to her, uh, her property, which is out of cell service. So we had like stopped to like pull over and like Google before we po- were, oh, before yeah, we were out sure, of service. Cause sure. like, we need to figure this out right now. Yeah. It's going to fucking bother, vo- bother us for the next few days. Were you trying to find her name or trying to see all the stuff that she'd we're been trying in? Trying to trying find to her name. Her filmography. We're, yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah, I forget the details. I'll, I'll have to like ask Shelby again, what it was exactly. Cause I just remember it was not Debbie does Dallas. Cause I just kept being like, are you sure? And she's like, no, it wasn't Debbie does uh, Dallas. Well, cause Deli- Debbie does Dallas is like the, that's the seventies. Like that's a really old. Yeah, like, exactly. Like but that was like the class. Like even like when I was in middle school, that was the one oh, that of course. like everyone yeah. talked about. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's the easy. I mean, well, that's a great fucking name, right? So it's so yeah. easily like uh, reference, referenceable. Yeah. For sure. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> Porn and collections. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Should we talk about the record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, it's pretty good. <laughs> Sit in that silence, radio fans. <laughs> no, man, the Lawrence Arms is just the best band. Skeleton Coast is, uh, mm-hmm. is the most recent record. The reason that I chose to do it today is because... Um, uh, but a few days ago, Punk Rock Bowling mm-hmm. announced that uh, Lawrence Arms won't be making it. Yeah. Um, which is incredibly very devastating. Yeah, yeah, I was I was very much looking forward to their uh, set, mo- probably more so than than most of the bands that were going there. Mm-hmm. Um, other than Dillinger Four, and Dillinger Four has taken over their spot on the actual show, so they're mm-hmm. going to get to kind of see two Dillinger Four shows, which is sweet. No Lawrence Arms kicking the bag. 
a little bit upset about that, but let's keep the positivity rolling through. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, kind of talk about um, yeah, the record in the most positive light as I can, right? Because it's not up to them, I'm sure, right? It's not them. It's not Brendan Kelly and Chris McCoggan and Neil Hennessy that fucked me. <laughs> it's punk rock bowling. Yeah, and COVID. Mostly COVID. <laughs> COVID. I love everybody. Yeah, I shouldn't be. Yeah, I shouldn't yeah. be over here talking trash. But what did you think about the record, Jackie? I liked it a lot. I've heard it a, um, a few times. Oh, I've played it for you a bunch. Yeah, yeah. no, but I, I I quite enjoyed it. I like. Um, yeah, I mean, I like uh, I like the Lawrence Arms. I like Brendan Kelly. I like his his voice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. It's good. Uh, another good kind of band. Um, if you aren't like super into to like punk rock, but like want to start getting into it, I would say this is like a good band to yeah. start with. It's pretty accessible. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's fun. A lot of fun tunes. And uh, like you said, I like how it all kind of has like a a theme to it. It is like a bit of a concept album. It all flows together nicely. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I super super enjoyed it. Been been listening to it all day. Hell yeah. Well, where am I? Oh, skeletons on the shirt. Skeletons on the coast. Nice. <laughs> I like the idea. They named it after some place in Africa where apparently like um, ships. And whales just get beached all the time because the, si- the tides are so like unpredictable or whatever. So you'll yeah. always find like little scavenger dogs or whatever just picking the bones. There is there's something a, like incredibly poetic about that. Yeah, there's this. I was during my, I was watching this like documentary series about this guy who just like goes and like takes photos of bears, and one of them was like the polar bear episode, and there is like this beach. I think it was like up in the, uh, like Arctic. And uh, it was like in this village that uh, it's like in a um, like an indigenous village. And anyways, there's this beach that they always kind of whales will tend to get beached on. And so it's like this big kind of graveyard of like whale bones because they just bring them to this one area. And yeah, it's all like polar bears and stuff that just kind of hang out there and pick apart. All of like the the blubber and stuff remaining on the bones. Yeah, there's something. like yeah, like something like poetic about that thing to like kind of like to 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 focus an entire album uh, along the the idea of mm-hmm. like a scavenger's land where mm-hmm. you know what I mean everything is only there and like I be everything can kind of be washed away tomorrow yeah you know what I mean and there will just be like another <laughs> another pile of refuse there and the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the following day <laughs> is something so like hauntingly fucking cool mm-hmm. um, but. Uh, I think that what you got to do when um, I, if, if this is a band that you're just going to get into, there's a 20 year career to mm-hmm. kind of go back to. So it's kind of interesting to, you know, to tell somebody to get into the band and then say like this new one is the shit. Cause mm-hmm. o- honestly, like if you get really into this one and then go back to the first, I think you might have to like put some pieces together if you're not. Yeah. I would say even like starting here and then going like backwards through time with their albums yeah. would be like a good way to, I think it would be like yeah. for what you were saying, if you were looking for something like a little bit more accessible that you kind of want to get into that style of music, then I definitely like from here working all the way back would be a fucking cool exercise for somebody that has never heard the band before. Yeah. I started at the beginning and went all the way forward. Right. Mm-hmm. So I kind of got to see the progression in the sense of, um, yeah a band that for i mean not speaking anything negatively about that band but they were like the next generation fat records bands where you're signed by no effects and you're in a um a camp of bands that kind of largely sound the same or they're kind of all doing the same thing right you know what i mean um on a playlist you could go you know mum shuffle them all up Mm -hmm. and and be in a pretty good um place but they were doing something a little bit different musically definitely fit the label but s- from the songwriting there was always something that was going on there it was a little bit different they put out an album called greatest story ever told mm-hmm. when i was young holy shit i don't know but uh it was more of a concept album too right but like literary concept album right i fucking still don't know what they're talking about on right that thing, I, had to l- I had to read a lot more books <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. so they've taken some um uh, they're taking some shots, I think, for being like maybe a little bit more like intellectual than their fan base, but they didn't do anything about being like up their own ass about it. Yeah. And I yeah. think um, like the world has now caught up to where the Lawrence Arms are. Mm-hmm. And I think that's um, that's something that's really fucking cool for them because 
being on like fat records for the majority of their career and then going um to epitaph records which is basically if you're in a punk rock band then those two um they they might be like uh you know say what you will about the bands and about what's going on there but like you're gonna open yourself up to much wider fan base larger distribution tours you know what i mean stuff like that or whatever right so you're gonna get it's like close to like a major label you know that you're gonna get in that genre which is you know pretty hit or miss like you could either get on and and do well but like for canadian punk rock let's say just for example there's one band called pop Mm -hmm. that is very fucking popular um and uh another band like uh i'll say the flatliners which in my opinion are a much better band that have been around for like a little bit longer or whatever but for some reason pop found this right this thing that um that broke them through to where i'll just walk down the street and you'll see Mm-hmm. you know kids wearing a, a pup t-shirt just because yeah. they were at a show but you're like well do you listen to like the rest of this like style of music right. from bands that are friends of theirs yeah you know what i mean but they never really like kind of um cataloged out and i think that a lot of the stuff that um that becomes um lumped together is because of that i don't think because pup didn't go that that route of getting on this label and then touring with those bands and then kind of being um kind of a part of that um, that whole system, mm-hmm. which Lawrence Arms definitely were, and not necessarily a standout band of that system, I think for a long time, right? And there's a lot of good, like there's a lot of great fucking Chicago punk rock bands, and it's the kind of like this own pocket, it's its own sound, and you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, they're kind of like doing their thing over there, right? Which isn't like drastically different, but it's definitely, you know, um, of that, of that variety and of that neighborhood, where you listen to like Peg Boy or like. You know what I mean, like Jawbreaker, like Alkaline Trio, or something like that. You can kind of like put all these like kind of poppy, but like, um, like pop punk, but with um, really solid lyrics that, you know, kind of like paint a picture or whatever. And they're not afraid to like take you there. Where a lot of mm-hmm. like other like California punk might be like, too, um, popular about chicks or about this. Where too like East Coast might be like too like aggressive or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of the bands that kind of like fall in that same category. And for twenty years later to see the Lawrence Arms just kind of still like holding a torch and actually putting out better shit than all their contemporaries yeah and only consistently getting better i think that speaks a lot to like their the evolution of their songwriting and the evolution of um like them i think being more comfortable as artists or whatever doing being able to do whatever the fuck they want to do well yeah and i think that's the thing that makes them kind of stand out is that they do whatever they want to do and it's like always um like good and i feel like uh uh brendan kelly's voice is so unique that you can always tell, even if it's no matter what the from what era yeah. the the song is from, you know that it's you know that it's them because of uh, him and like his voice. Oh, totally. Um, I gotta show yeah, you some old Chris too because there's a lot of like the the hits from this band. It's interesting mm-hmm. that uh, they have an album called Cocktails and Dreams, which is more of like a compilation of all the stuff that they've put on. Um, uh, it's it's cohesive and it sounds like its own record, but mm-hmm. a lot of this are like oh this is these three songs are from a f- um, a seven inch we put out or this one song is from a compilation or this one you know mm-hmm. so they kind of put everything together, and a lot of those are like the unsung hero I think of the Lawrence Arms would be like Chris McCoggan mm-hmm. because it's like almost like connective tissue and shit right like a lot of the uh, like there's a lot of punk bands that come fast and come hard and you know what I mean and kind of like rip through or whatever but like this like um you know like the the longest drink at the at the loneliest bar and uh like a thousand resolutions and all these like fucking you know quintessential songs that you might you know just like skip over right now i'm like 10 years later 15 years later fuck damn you're 20 years later how long i listen to this fucking band that those are the ones that kind of like right that are like almost resonating like long term yeah, whereas like yeah. if i want to go in like fucking like mosh and like you know f- rip my fucking shirt off and dance a little bit then it's going to be the brendan songs Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, there's so much here. Based. There's so much content. Yeah, here. yeah. And it's all just like, but it's all like well made, well produced, well written. Mm-hmm. Like it's just good, like quality music. And this isn't like a, like it seems like an album that I would like find and listen to and like, like on my, on my own and not even realize that it's like a punk like band. You wouldn't, yeah, to classify you it know? as that, right? There's Pigeons yeah. and Spies. There's yeah, I'm yeah. the Demon. There's like a few that are clearly are like PTA or no, yeah. PTA would be the first song that um no ghost right yeah pta being the like mm-hmm. this like yeah second track there's probably four or five on here that are fucking like definitive mm-hmm. you know kind of yeah kick, yeah kick but it all like songs, goes but the rest with of it is the, yeah exactly it, it, it all flows together yeah not not a stuff. jarring um uh 
transition from like kind of one to the next or whatever and i think that's the cool like that a lot of bands could probably um you know like do this but it wouldn't feel like as cohesive you know what mm-hmm. i mean like blink 182 is like probably not the greatest fucking um you know they sound nothing alike or whatever but you have th- a three-piece yeah, band yeah. with two singers yeah. and it fucking and it works kind of harmoniously where i don't yeah. think like like tom or mark had like anything that would really like set the two apart whereas right. this band fucking has like they are they're so goddamn different those songs i would i would love to see one you know each other mm-hmm. um like the singer swap for each song right but it would be dog shit because chris is so good at doing chris mccoggan stuff and right. brendan kelly is so good at doing brendan kelly stuff that like mm-hmm. you know what i mean they stand alone or whatever but they come together like voltron well it's a uh, kind of similar if we go back to like one of the our earlier episodes with rumors and fleetwood mac there are the three main singers with a uh, christine and Lindsay. And yeah Stevie. okay yeah. and the, all of their songs are so distinctly them yeah like Lindsay's songs are so Lindsay. like they're more upbeat yeah. they have like an interesting rhythm totally christine does more kind of slow ballads mm-hmm. And uh, Stevie, I don't even know how you would classify Stevie's songs. They're kind of, because they're not like really upbeat and fun. They're not ballads, but they're kind of just like, like, fuck you. Fuck you, bearing all, all of my, yeah. my feelings yeah. here songs. And you couldn't even imagine any of them Thunder singing Thunder only each happens other's. when it's raining. It's a, it's, it's a ballad, yeah. but it's not, like a, there's no, like, there's not like a power ballad. Exactly. You know like it I mean? still has right? like a fucking yeah. groove to it. Oh, for sure. Um, but the, I couldn't imagine in any of them swapping out their songs with each other. But at the same time, it all flows together. Like it all is very cohesive. Yeah, that's the that. fucking band, yeah, right? Like yeah, I think at the yeah. end of the day, like that, is, if you can establish like your sound as being as diverse as having two mm-hmm. or fucking three singers in Fleetwood Max. Yeah. Like, they, like if you can, you know, like really iron that down to the point where like nobody else is going to do what we do. This is mm-hmm. the fucking band. But, you know, um, you know, I mean, like Bad Religion is going to be Bad Religion. And one of my favorite fucking bands of all mm-hmm. time. Right. But that um, you know what you're going to get there. Right. Like if you bite into a fucking piece of Pennywise pizza, it's going to be fucking Pennywise from you know 89 to fucking last year Mm -hmm. right which is which is totally cool and like that's what you're gonna you know like that's that's for that right Mm but um as like i'm getting a little bit older you're finding that like maybe like my music isn't growing with me Mm -hmm. or um it might get stale or something right like a big part of like the music that i love is the community that i get to share it with yeah and the past two years that's been non-existent right right? so for that you have something like um you know there's some there's some somber shit here and mm-hmm. I love the, you know what I mean, the like the darker side of, of, of songwriting, and I like fucking, you know what I mean. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dancer, Jackie. Yeah. You know I'm a dancer, yeah. right? So like I still like <laughs> to move and groove, right? So like yeah, when I can, yeah. when you can perfectly, you know, put your despair with like fast mm-hmm. drums and shit like that, and not make it a fucking drip and a bummer for everybody to listen yeah, to, then like yeah. it's perfect. It's a perfect album. Yeah. But on that like note too about like bands like changing and stuff as they like get older i feel like because i feel like that's such like a common thing for people to be like oh like fuck them like they changed yeah. not what they used to be but like you're a red hot totally chili peppers fan jackie <laughs> they, yeah, like but, that but band gets a lot point. of shit but for that yeah you know but I mean? my point that yeah exactly and right. so that's my my point is that like if you're in a band for like fucking 20 years 20 30 years then and you're and, and you've you don't maintained change? the same sound the whole time then what the fuck are you doing because as you if you're being like true, they're being bad religion and they're the best fucking band in the world Jackie. okay okay, okay I'm yeah i'm not saying there's not I'm, I'm not saying that there's not exceptions to this but i'm saying in i agree general, i agree and i totally disagree being, at the same time yeah. I, in general yeah if you're an artist and you're you're being true your art is true to yourself and what you're feeling then as you grow as a person then your art is going to grow and change with you and i think like even like with uh like comedy too like i feel like comedians are so scared of like bettering Uh, themselves because they don't want their their them to be less funny but it's like as you grow your comedy is going to grow with you and you're still going to be funny it's just going to be in a different direction and that's still that's that's part of you can't stop yourself from from growing as a person totally. because you're afraid that your art is going to change but at the same time obviously there are bands and artists that do remain consistent but i just think that 
I don't understand. Like, I get if you really liked a band as it was and you don't like a direction they yeah. took. And it can go, it can be like their record labels, like, oh, you need to be more poppy or whatever. That happens all the time. Mm -hmm. But in general, like with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, like they grew because they're, I mean, they're in their like their fucking forties and fifties now. Yeah, totally. And so obviously, they're it's going to be different from when they were in like their fucking early twenties, jumping around stage. Yeah, totally. You know. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of nice. It's kind of it makes you grow like more attached to the artist when you kind of grow up and change with them, you know, and you kind of like experience. Mm like them looking through life through a different lens and it's like reflected in their art and yeah sometimes it doesn't resonate but it's sure. like really like special and like magical when it does sure, and when yeah, like yeah, you yeah. grow like with them and like change with them and it still remains like it still speaks to you whatever they're doing absolutely uh, yeah no i think it's like it's important but i'm on the like i'm uh, i'm i want to agree but i'm totally a hypocrite in this thing is that i want some bands to grow but I want some bands to stay the same because, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's like, that's, that's what you do. Right. So yeah. under the confines of a genre, it would be really shitty. Bad Religion's second album was called into the unknown trash. Mm -hmm. And they came right back to the known right? <laughs> and yeah. kind of continue with what they do. Right. Which is, well, it just which is interesting. On what makes yeah, you happy right? as, an, as well, an artist and, and like as a fan and what you, you. want to, yeah, exactly. Because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, of bands that have started to, um, uh, that have grown naturally and their fan base has left them. There's some that have found new ones. You know what I mean? Like AFI, for example, if we're just going to stay in the punk rock um, umbrella, like AFI was a hardcore band and then like a death rock band and then like uh, like a weird like emo band or whatever. Like so um, they've like gained popularity through that, losing some of like their original core members. I don't think it's hurting them as like a band. Mm -hmm. um, then you have, you know, say like a band like uh, like the Flatliners, kind of starting from like something a little bit harder and going a little bit softer and I'm um, talking to people that you know might have been like the core fan group or whatever mm -hmm. and you know what I mean you really have to be kind of growing up with that band to kind of get it yeah um whereas like I would totally wear a shirt that said make the flatliner ska again right right so yeah, like some yeah, yeah. I'm like it, if I it matters nothing what I think you yeah, know what I mean like at the yeah. end of the day right so because I'll, I'll just like pick and choose right because if I love that yeah. sound so much um, I just want you to give it to me. But if you want to do something like Lawrence Arms have done and, and keep kind of growing and stuff, it doesn't like the music isn't like th that different. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's di really different at all. You know what I mean? I'll play them all kind of, you want know, to mix. They just put out uh, greatest hits. Uh, we are the champions of the world. I recommend mm -hmm. getting that album and then putting on, Hey, what time does Pensacola um, wings of gold go on anyway? And presenting the dancing machine. If you put those two songs onto the greatest hits, then it actually is the greatest hits. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> but I had to get that out there. But I mean, um, you, I'm completely undecisive. I think, and uh, what I want is irrelevant to talk about because when an artist gives me something that when I hear, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's the new shit, or, or that's what I like. Then I'll, yeah. you know, I mean, I'll, I'll go with it. Yeah, but yeah. if a band that I really love fucking swings Changes. and misses hard, yeah. then I'll give them shit. You're like, why don't you just do what you always do? The thing yeah. that I like. So I don't know. I'm a complete asshole. The only thing that I can tell you is that this is a fucking great record. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's totally subjective. And it yeah. totally happens all the fucking time where a band you like goes in a new direction. And you're like, ah, oh, this is not really my thing. I just think that as long as they're doing what speaks to them yeah. and you can tell that it's authentic oh, sure. then like do your fuck like do your fucking Absolutely. thing i might not like it mm -hmm. i might not listen to it but don't try to be something that you're not anymore oh definitely just remain true and that, to, yeah if you've yeah. grown out of your like scene and shit like that a veil is a great um uh point for that if you like to veil and uh you want there still to be a veil songs you need to realize that uh tim barry is just doing fucking what he wants to do right mm -hmm. a veil's not getting back together you yeah. might do a tour and shit like that. You might get lucky and see him here and there, right? But Tim Barry's making stuff that's fucking drastically different from the hardcore music that you liked, you know, from yeah. before. Yeah, and I think, like, people talk about, like, artists, like, selling out because they, they changed their music or whatever. But I think uh, selling out is just not being authentic to who you are anymore. Yeah, if you totally. were, 
if you were like a, a rock star and now you're making like pop music but that is genuinely like authentically you then that's you're not selling out you're oh, just following you. you're still doing your art mm. as long as you're like following your heart and doing what feels authentic to you then you're still making like good you're making uh, like good art mm. but if you're like doing something because that's what you've always done and you're afraid to change but you don't really feel it anymore then like your art is gonna suffer and people are gonna be able to tell that it's well, not either real the art anymore. will or the person will i think yeah right? like yeah. yeah so if the art doesn't and like you know fans will kind of come out in droves for like the thing that you do or whatever but that might not like fulfill you as a person that's like up to the artist i guess yeah. to make that distinction to say oh no i gotta i gotta do this for me and make the switch and fuck everybody else because that's something that's that's badass that's what as punk rock as it can get not the fucking case here this band fucking found a thing mm -hmm. and then maintained and got better if you want to like a hip-hop um parallel i would say aesop rock fucking does nothing but get better mm -hmm. every fucking album release especially in the past like you know three or four or whatever that have come out so um all I want to say at the end here, Jackie, is mm -hmm. that listen to the Lawrence Arms <laughs> every day and tell them to come play shows in Vancouver <laughs> and tour again with Kyle Kinane. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, Very shout cool. out to Chicago. Shout out to <laughs> one of my favorite bands. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just really wish that I could see you guys in at the end of the month at Punk Rock Bowling. <laughs> gonna be there. Oh, we're going to have to do extra episodes while I'm gone. Yeah, we'll have to bank. Okay. Yeah, we'll bank do that. Bank some up, yeah. We'll do that. Maybe we'll do Oh, Calcutta. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, any final uh, thoughts? Uh, no, listen to the album. It's a it's a solid album, solid band. I think you'll like it even if you're not into punk rock. It's just good music. It's accessible. Yeah. If and you uh, don't throw out your child's porn. Don't throw collection. the baby out with the bathwater. Don't throw the porn out with, with the cum water. Water. Weird. <laughs> Super weird. Also, Come for water. for more uh, Brendan <laughs> Kelly, go to um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jackie. Go to uh, it's Better Sandwich, I believe. BetterSandwich dot com. Uh, Brendan Kelly also blogs and uh, writes a bunch of cool shit. And if you want to um, uh, see funny quips from him on Twitter, uh, follow either Brendan Kelly or Nihilist Arby's and uh, look up Nihilist Arby's, and you'll see some funny stuff from that too. Nice. It's good stuff. Check them out. Nice. Bye. <laughs>